Hello world! It's officially December 31st, which means we are mere hours away from the start of the year 2021. But before we do that, let's stroll down memory lane, if you will, and address the elephant in the room. The giant COVID positive elephant in the room. And that's 2020. So yeah, um, 2020 sucked. In many ways, it's, it's, it's really hard to give a retrospect of 2020 without mentioning the real hardships, not just the virus. I'm talking systemic racism, rise and decline of businesses and job opportunities, education, sports, so on and so forth. So being in the medium of movies and movie reviews, I will try my best to provide a retrospect of everything in the realm of movies in the year of 2020. But before I do, I do really want to take time to acknowledge and offer any type of condolences to any and all that had someone or knew someone that endured the hardships of this year with the coronavirus or and or loss of employment or decline of health. I really do hope that you and your friends and loved ones were able to withstand the brunt of this year and hope that your health and your spirits increase exponentially going into 2021. With that being said, I figure I will go into a retrospect just pointing out some key elements and key events of the year that were monumental and newsworthy as much as I can uh, for film. I will also get into some surprises and also some things that I think hold some hope as we go into 2021 and the unknown future really that lies ahead for the movie industry. So let's get started. First, let's just say the first two and a half months of this year actually started off quite well. Lest we forget this year at the Academy Awards, Parasite walked away with the big four awards at the Oscars. It won for best foreign film, obviously. It won for best original screenplay, it won surprisingly for Best Director and Bong Joon-ho, and even more surprisingly, won for Best Picture. This will mark the first film in history, the first non-English film in Academy Awards history to win for Best Picture. And not to mention starting off the year with some fairly impressive films. For example, uh, January of 2020 saw the release of the much expected, much anticipated sequel, Bad Boys for Life. And while it was long overdue, it still was a surprisingly good film to start off the new year. A couple of weeks later, we would see releases of films like The Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss, which is a psychologically uh, good take on a classic uh, horror film from a era long ago. You got Sonic the Hedgehog that came out in February, which was a film that originally was going to be doomed to fail from the get-go because of the first trailer and how bad Sonic looked CGI-wise. But thanks to really kind of lobbying and fan service, it was redeemed and Sonic was redone, the design at least. And although it wasn't a visionary classic, it was significantly better than it was originally anticipated to be. Then you had other films such as Birds of Prey, you know, the Harley Quinn movie that did well, critically at least. The Way Back, which starred Ben Affleck, which was really kind of a redeeming and resurrecting kind of performance by the renowned actor. You got another Disney and Pixar film Onward that was released, which was a little under the radar, but it was actually very heartfelt and an effective film. So there was promise to be had in the first two, two and a half months of 2020. Then of course, we all knew what happened next. As the rise in coronavirus cases began to increase, causing it to become uh, ultimately a pandemic, uh, it led to businesses to halt production, close, you know, massive shutdowns, and the movie industry was no exception. Theaters closed, movie sets were forced to shut down as government regulations began to enforce social distancing and working remotely. This was really the catalyst in what I believe to be the beginning of the end of cinema the way we're, we were used to having it. 
as theaters closed it would cause movie studios to reconsider the release of their big budgeted planned films for 2020. And 2020 was in store for some big releases. And the first film, the first casualty, I guess, if you will, that kind of responded to the uh, pandemic crisis was the anticipated James Bond film, No Time to Die. What was originally supposed to be released in April of 2020 was then shifted to November of 2020 and now is being shifted to April of 2021. So as far as the rescheduling and, and restructuring of releases, I think it's safe to say No Time to Die was the first one and would cause a ripple effect of other films uh, in the foreseeable future to shift their release dates or turn into a different direction. For example, F9, the Fast Saga, you know, the new Fast and Furious film, which was scheduled to be released Memorial Day weekend 2020, was ultimately pushed back a year to May 2021. You've got other films too that got pushed back because of the coronavirus, like Candyman, uh, Dune, Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds, The Kingsman, which is the prequel to the Kingsman films, uh, Morbius, the uh, Spider-Man universe film with uh, Jared Leto, A Quiet Place Part Two, Top Gun Maverick with Tom Cruise, and other films uh, all throughout 2020 that would shift to 2021. One notable film to point out uh, that actually did maintain a theatrical release uh, was Tenet. That was the Christopher Nolan film um, and Warner Brothers released film that was supposed to come out in July, but ultimately pushed back two months, I wanna say into late August, early September. A film that was really, really uh, anticipated being that it's Christopher Nolan. And ultimately it would, it would just be unsalvageable had it not been released in theaters. So they had no choice but to release it in theaters despite all of the government and safety protocols with the coronavirus and social distancing. They still released it in theaters. Uh, and although despite all of the, uh, the setbacks, it did uh, manage to get $300 million in the box office. Yes, it's not a big amount. It's not your typical 600, 700 million dollars, billion dollar box office, you know, raking in. But as far as bringing in the numbers it did during a pandemic, $300 million is a lot, but of course it's gonna be underwhelming compared to the other films um, that have came out years before. So that's a notable film to, to, to look at when it comes to uh, films that maintained a theatrical release uh, despite the coronavirus and uh, pandemic outbreak. But also noteworthy to mention was studios' decisions to move films that were originally theatrical to digital stream. The first one that kind of started or kickstarted this whole video on demand um, release was Disney's live action version of Mulan. Once again, Mulan was an anticipated film that was scheduled to be released in March of this year and garnered a lot of anticipation and hype because of really kind of the ambiance of it. But ultimately with the coronavirus being as, as deadly as it was, forced Disney's hand to say, yeah, we're not gonna release it in theaters, but we're gonna release it on Disney+. Plus." The brunt of this story was Disney not only moving the film to its streaming platform, but also giving the tag of premiere access, which basically means the film is available to watch on the streaming service now, but for an additional $30. Or subscribers can wait until December when the film will be, be able to release with all regular subscribers. There were pros and there were cons all throughout, but it was new to everyone, especially Disney, but now after using Mulan as more so a learning curve, I think Disney and Disney Plus have now wisely chosen how to restructure their releasing of their films and products, at least for the foreseeable future during the pandemic. Then we've got the other side of that coin, HBO Max. HBO Max uh, is a streaming service that started off promising with the plethora of property and content it made available for their subscribers. 
as well as original content such as the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion. So a lot of promise there, you know, a bunch of DC property, a bunch of um, Cartoon Network property, a bunch of Warner Brothers property. HBO Max was on a roll. Then came one of its bombshells. Wonder Woman 1984, uh, one of Warner Brothers' biggest, most anticipated releases of the year, um, the sequel to the box office success of Wonder Woman from 2017, would be released exclusively on HBO Max. However, along with that news comes an even bigger bombshell that all future Warner Brothers films in 2021 would be released in their scheduled theatrical date if they had one and same day can be streamed on HBO Max. Now that was a big slap in the face for everybody in the film industry, particularly directors, producers, so on and so forth. As one, they weren't formally notified that Warner Brothers would go in this direction until it was announced the day of. And two, this would more so diminish any type of um, revenue that it could rake in theatrically as it would more so lead audiences to stream instead of watching it in theaters. Which, of course, theaters is where most of the revenue for filmmakers comes from. It is a noteworthy thing to look at and to keep an eye on as 2021 rolls on in and we'll see if HBO Max and Warner Brothers stands by their decision to maintain same day releases on streaming or make exceptions as they've already done so with at least one of their films in Dune. Now while I don't want to sound overall somber and, and, and negative on how this pandemic ultimately killed or severely damaged the movie business, there are some positive things to be said about what has come out in 2020. While some films turned to the streaming release platforms, there were some that did leave lasting impressions as being good to exponentially great films. Films like uh, David Fincher's Mank, uh, Chris Hemsworth's Extraction, you got Spike Lee's The Five Bloods, uh, the miniseries on Netflix, The Queen's Gambit, uh, The Trial of the Chicago Seven, and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, all on Netflix. You've got Hamilton and Disney Pixar's Soul on Disney+. Plus. You've got the release of the much anticipated uh, third film in the Bill and Ted series, Bill and Ted Face the Music. And not to mention what I think was one of the surprise, more so the surprise of 2020, the Borat 2 film that was released on Amazon Prime. So yeah, there were much noteworthy films that came out in 2020, uh, whether it be limited release uh, in theaters or on streaming platforms that really were salvageable and most noteworthy to, to take away from 2020. And also, I do not want to conclude without mentioning also um, the notable artists that were taken from us, unfortunately, this year. Uh, of course, the more famous uh, passing that occurred undoubtedly was the untimely passing of Chadwick Boseman, aka T'Challa from the Black Panther film and the MCU saga. Uh, at just 43 years young, his battle with colon cancer was an enduring one, but ultimately it got the best of him. Other notable uh, and tragic losses include, but are not limited to, um, David Prowse, uh, who was the physical actor for, for Darth Vader in, in the original Star Wars trilogy. Sir Sean Connery, uh, you know, in the James Bond films, notable for his movies, uh, the James Bond films. Alex Trebek, Regis Philman, famous hosts. Uh, Kelly Preston, Naya Rivera from Glee, famous movie score composer, and Neo Morricone. Uh, Ian Holm, who played Bilbo in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Fred Willard, who's been notable for many uh, films and television series throughout his career. Max von Sydow, who uh, was in The Exorcist. Kirk Douglas, uh, actor in Spartacus, as well as father of Michael Douglas. Tommy Lister Jr., who we know as Debo from the Friday series. And even uh, Kobe Bryant, who, remember, is an Academy Award winner. Those are just to name a few. Yes, sadly, those souls are gone but not forgotten, especially in the film and entertainment industry. 
So with 2020 drawing to a close, what can we look forward to for 2021? Well, kind of like, kind of like how it was the first two and a half months of the year, hopefully with promise. With the movie industry taking into consideration the vaccine being distributed worldwide, many studios are anticipating things to go back to normal or close to normal come March or April of 2021, as many films uh, which were scheduled to release in 2020 have aimed for those two months. However, can they maintain those dates? Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. We're just going to have to see as the days and months roll along. Will movie theaters ever be salvaged as the pandemic has dug their graves? As many movie theater chains like AMC, Regal, Cinemark, so on and so forth have really kind of um, built up on their already increasingly big deficits and, 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 and losses. Hell, even Tom Hanks himself has said that he hopes films like Marvel movies bring people back to the theaters. So it looks like Marvel films are going to be called on once again to be heroes once more. Anyways, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what 2021 can offer. All I can hope for is that the love for movies and the movie going experience, though no longer normal and is still to be yearned for by its audience. So that's just a little retrospect on what's happened in the past 12 months in movies and movie news. What was a noteworthy thing that you liked or that you think is worth mentioning that I probably didn't mention? Leave them in the comments section below. Like, share, subscribe. Please let me know of anything that I missed out. Was there anything that uh, you feel like is important that you want to share? Any and all comments are welcome. Well, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sticking around to listen to this whole retrospect. And here's to hoping that 2021 offers greener pastures, not just for movies, but for everything around the world so once again thank you guys for tuning in um everybody have a very safe fun and enjoyable uh new year's eve i will see you guys next year okay never mind but anyways i hope everyone does have a safe new year's eve and enjoys the the coming year of 2021 as we start off the new year let's hope and pray for bigger and better things for this world, for movies, for sports, for health, for education, for politics, for government, everything. Let's just hope that, you know, we can erase what was 2020 and just hope for just a beacon of hope that we can have uh, for the new year. So this is Eugene signing off once again for another video. Be on the lookout for more videos to come. Please look at my other videos that I've done throughout the year of 2020. My Eugene reviews, uh, the quick takes, unboxing that I have, and even my little special 12 Days of Christmas movie classics that I did recently. Thank you once more. And once again, uh, I've said it a lot, but I really do hope everyone out there have a very happy and safe new year. Let's bring in 2021 with a bang. Come on, yeah. Drop it. Oh. Oh.